Here in America, we're used to being number one. Number one richest country, number one middle class. Well, unfortunately, it looks like those days might be over. Really interesting story out of the New York Times. We've got a new um, portion of the Times called The Upshot. That's a website covering policy and politics. And they uh, actually work with the Luxembourg Income Study Database to put these numbers together and to show you who is the new number one in median wages, middle class, etc., and how we've been doing over the last 35 years. First of all, we uh, 35 years ago we're doing great. We were actually number one in terms of both median income and the middle class by a long shot, and we've been in a steady decline since, especially compared to other countries. And right now, when Americans are asked, about 30 percent of people in America believe that the country is headed in the right direction. So that's obviously a very bad number because the overwhelming majority think that we're headed in the wrong direction. Well, it turns out that gut feeling that they have is totally right. So now let me quote the New York Times for the results of the study. While the wealthiest Americans are outpacing many of their global peers, a New York Times analysis shows that across the lower and middle income tiers, citizens of other advanced countries have received considerably larger raises over the last three decades. Now this is something that we've been telling you about on the Young Turks for a long time. And we've shown you charts along these lines before. The productivity of the American worker did not go down. It actually went up significantly. But the gains from that productivity did not go to the great majority of us. It went to the top 1% and to the corporations who took most of those gains. We'll take, tell you more about those facts in a second. Now they continue to explain how we're doing compared to other countries. Middle class incomes in Canada, substantially behind in 2000, now appear to be higher than in the United States. So when you talk about middle class, we have a new champion. It's Canada. It's not the US anymore. Now, median income in Canada pulled into a tie with the median United States income in 2010 and has most likely surpassed it since then. Now that's a different number, and understand that because that's really important. One thing is how the middle class is doing, the number of people that are in the middle of the income brackets, right? This is not the average salary that we get here in the US or the average income that we get, because the average is still pretty high because our top salaries, our top income is so gargantuanly high and so much higher than almost any other country. Because we have great income inequality in this country that, does, that is not reflected in the median income. So the median income is not just taking all the salaries and then dividing by the number of people here in the US. It shows you the income where 50% of Americans are below that number and 50% of Americans are above that number, right? So it's basically the middle of the number of people that are getting that salary, okay? So when you look at that, com comparing Canada and America, the median income, Canada now beats us, meaning that there are more people in Canada that are wealthier than in the US. Now, the very wealthy here in the US do substantially better, but for the rest of us, Canada now on average does better. Oops. It doesn't quite have the same ring. We're number two. The guys above us are actually literally above us. <laughs> They're right there. They're our neighbors. They're not that different. But they beat us. Why? Because they have different policies. We'll get to that in a second. Now, first of all, that's the middle class and the median uh, income. How about the poor? The poor and, oh, by the way, before I get to that, let me actually show you a chart here because this is important. It shows you the lead that the U.S. had in all these different countries. And... Uh, now how those countries have caught up. As you see on the far left there, Canada has caught us and is now surpassing us. Uh, but all of those countries have had huge jumps. Uh, not every one of them has caught us, but everyone is coming very close to us while in the last especially 12 years, 14 years, we have stagnated, okay? And our rate of growth is nowhere near them. In fact, we're not even growing anymore. I'll get to that in a second as well. Now let's go to the poor. Uh, the poor in much of Europe earned more than poor Americans. So, hmm, if the poor are doing better elsewhere and the middle class is doing better elsewhere, what are we really doing well in? Oh, right, the very, very, very top. The elites in America are super elites. <sighs> Boy, that makes all of us feel good, doesn't it? <laughs> now, of course, the idea was that's okay, guys. 
We're not envious of that because of trickle-down economics. So those guys will get the money, but it will trickle down to you guys, to the middle class to the, and the poor, and you'll do better. Except that's not what happened. It did not trickle down. They just held it. Turns out that was just a lie to excuse them getting lower taxes and getting a bigger percentage of the money. More facts. A family at the 20th percentile of the income distribution in this country makes significantly less money than a similar fa family in Canada, Sweden, Norway, Finland, or the Netherlands. Now, a lot of those are what uh, conservatives in this country would call, ah, socialist countries, we don't want to be like Europe. Well, maybe our top 1% doesn't want to be like Europe, but the other 99% of us wouldn't mind, especially if you're in the bottom brackets. They treat you far more humanely over there. Now, remember that 35 years ago, as the New York Times points out, the reverse was true. So not only did our rich do better back then, but our poor did better, our middle class did better. And this is really important, because this is what I emphasize all the time on the show. In 1976, the Supreme Court says money is speech. In 1978, in Bellotti decision, they say that corporations have the right a men, a constitutional right to spend money in politics. In 1980, Ronald Reagan is uh, elected, and all these charts change right between 1978 and 1980. In fact, 35 years ago was 1979. Up until that point, we had about 40 years where the American worker had great productivity and great returns. When we actually worked for that money, we got that money. But they changed the rules in the late 1970s and in 1980. And then what happened was, from then on, you didn't get your productivity, they got your productivity. They got the fruits of your labor. So, uh, as you see with median per capita income, now again, this is the most important number because it shows you uh, where we are um, relative to other countries, not the average, because our rich skew the average, but the median of where the country is. Since 2000, the US is pretty much unchanged. Uh, how about Britain? Well, they're up 20%. Netherlands, up 14%. Canada, up 20%. So, it was bad from, you know, basically 1979 to 2000. But since 2000, it's gotten even worse because we're not even going up at all anymore for median income. So we're the, basically the median income of the country going nowhere. So if you thought we're on the wrong track, you're right, <laughs> okay? Instead, uh, it's not all countries. The other countries that have different rules are doing fine. In fact, here, let me show you just a quick summary of that. Graphic 14 here, Britain is at 19.7, Canada at 19.7, this is middle class incomes, okay? Uh, so this is a slightly different uh, number because it's not the median income, it's the middle class income, uh, but you see the same exact results. Ireland 16.2, Netherlands 13.9, and the US down at the bottom there since 2000, 0.3%, basically no change at all. So why, why did this happen? Well, the New York Times study uh, concludes that there was three main reasons, one was, Educational attainment in the U.S. has risen far more slowly. So if you don't focus on education, well, you don't get good results. Secondly, U.S. companies distribute a smaller share of their bounty to the middle class and poor. So what do they do? They take more dividends, they take more stock options, uh, but they give lower wages to their workers at those companies. And then finally, governments in Canada and Western Europe take more aggressive steps to raise take-home pay of low and middle income households by redistributing income. So, now here in America, oh, that's a terrible thing, you can't redistribute income. But here's some of the ways that they do it. For example, in Sweden, they have universal health care. In Canada, they have universal health care. We were told that that was going to destroy their middle class, except it turns out their middle class actually gets paid more than we do, right? And their rate of growth is much higher, same for Sweden, right? So they were lying to you. Uh, it does not hurt the middle class, it actually helps the middle class, plus they get the universal health care. So that's a form of redistribution where society says we're not going to let people die in the streets. What we're going to do is for the corporations that are doing well, for the top brackets that are doing well, well, they're going to share a slightly higher percentage of that so that people don't die in the streets, so that everybody gets health care, everybody gets 
uh, subsidized in some countries, including Sweden, childcare. So, and what does that create? It creates opportunity so that those people then can go work. They're not bums, they go work and they earn higher wages. It creates opportunity, by the way, also for education. When you say education is gonna be subsidized, so if you're poor, but your son or your daughter did great in school, well, we're gonna give you an opportunity to get into the middle class and even into the rich uh, brackets because we've given you a chance. Whereas here in the US, they say, don't redistribute my money. I don't want that poor kid who worked his ass off to get really good grades to have the same opportunity that I had. I don't want him to have that opportunity. Don't redistribute my money. Don't you dare take a higher percentage in taxes. So when you have incredibly low rates for the rich, you have incredibly low rates for corporations, what happens? The rich get richer and the rest of us start falling behind. Final conclusions of the study, the American rich pay lower taxes than the rich in many other places. This is not an accident, it is by design. Our middle class is getting destroyed on purpose so that the rich can have even more money. Now, it's a question of what do you do with taxes? It's not to say that you should take all the taxes, you get 70%, 90% of the money from the top brackets. It's a question of what's sensible for society so that in fact the poor and the middle class go up as the rich also go up. How do I know that that can work? It, first of all, it worked here in the US. Between 1940 and 1980, we had great prosperity for all of those different classes. Because we had a decent uh, income tax, we had decent corporate taxes, we didn't have the loopholes that we have now, and our government was not gutted by the rich and powerful who bought our politicians. Finally, when they say, well, if you do all that, it won't work. Let's go to the example of Sweden. Even with a large welfare state in Sweden, per capita GDP there has grown more quickly than in the United States over almost any extended recent period. A decade, 20 years, 30 years. Take any of those time periods and Sweden with their large welfare state has had their income go up substantially higher than the US as a matter of the increase in their rate. They're lying to you. It's not true that if you rig the, all the rules and the laws in favor of the rich and the multinational corporations that it will trickle down to you. It trickles down on you in terrible ways. Look at the actual numbers. We can be a more just society, we can be a fairer society, but honestly, the first thing you got to do to fix the system is, if you allow the rich to buy their politicians, well, of course they're going to set the rules to their advantage. We should go back to having a democracy like we had until the Supreme Court decided that corporations and the rich could spend unlimited money on politicians. There is an answer. It's a constitutional amendment. As Justice John Paul Stevens said today, that amendment is necessary, you must go above the head of the Supreme Court, and that's a guy who served on the Supreme Court for 35 years. At Wolfpack, we agree with that, wolf-pack.com. Get the amendment, get back our democracy, and then we can regain our middle class, and we can regain our status among nations. That we are a just society and a prosperous society. We can do both. Right now, unfortunately, we're not doing either for 99% of us.